Hello, everybody, and welcome into the Neighborhood Watch. I am your host, Josh Neighbors, here on College Football, Crystal Crystal Ball College Football, covering all things Big 12 football and basketball. And joining us here from the OSA San Diego Union Tribune, or do they just go by Tribune? It is Mark Ziegler, covers San Diego State. Mark, thank you for being here, and make sure I get this correct. Yeah, it's... It's Union Tribune officially. It used to be two papers. I started working for the Union, which was the morning paper. Tribune was the afternoon paper. Merged in 1992, actually, while I was in an Olympics, uh, yeah. covering the Winter Olympics in Alberville. It was the weirdest thing ever. All of a sudden, one night, I call in, and I've got a whole different set of editors I've never met. And I can't meet them because I'm in France. Um, but ever since, it's been <laughs> the Tribune, and, and we've been a morning paper. Um, and, uh, and obviously, now, uh, more of an online presence like all newspapers and print print product and so you cover san diego state and the reason why we we've brought you in is there's a few reasons san diego state obviously and uh you know is the school that is out of every single what we call group of five is the school most ready to make the jump to what we call the power five and i think the debate topic even you will go as far as say the athletic director has acknowledged it it's big 12 or pac 12 but the pressing issue is this deadline with the uh, Mountain West that they are facing, right? Explain to folks what this deadline is and so why there is an actual, it feels like there's an actual clock when it comes to San Diego State and conference realignment. Yeah, so this was something that, you know, when when news first broke, which is a, you know, a little bit over a year ago, um, uh, UCLA and USC were leaving the Pac-12. Instantly, everyone starts thinking, okay, what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? And let's look at expansion. Let's get a new media rights contract, blah, blah, blah. And San Diego State's instantly in that mix. And this deadline was always there, but it was so far away. It was never consideration. And, you know, first it was going to be Labor Day. They'd have a deal done. Then, okay, we didn't get it done by Labor Day. No later than Halloween. Then, okay, we'll have it by Thanksgiving. Or, you know, the conference uh, championship football game in Las Vegas for the Pac-12. They'll announce it there. Then, oh, the holidays came. We'll, we'll get it by the new year, by New Year's Day. And then it was, well, first couple months of, of 2023. And then it's no later than the final four. They will announce it at the final four. And now here we are uh, in the end of May. Uh, we're inside 30 days. And this deadline is, it's, it, it's kind of like you just turn the corner and whoop, this mountain's right here. And it, it's a big, big issue. So the way it works is... Um, the Mount West bylaws, uh, because they're still under GOR grant of rights with their with their current um, TV deal with CBS and Fox in the in the conference, uh, to get out of it, they must give one year notice. And conferences obviously operate sort of on that fiscal year, July first to, to June thirtieth. So they have to tell them by June thirtieth if they want to leave uh, with one year notice, meaning they would play twenty three twenty four in the Mount West and they'd be able to leave for twenty four twenty five, which is when USC UCLA are leaving and and the Pac twelve needs. Uh, some warm bodies to, to fill their seats. And, and uh, the buyout clause, uh, the exit fee, is three times the annual average payout per school, which is about five and a half million. It might be a little bit higher this year because of San Diego State's run in the NCAA tournament. So that times three is 17 million. So if they get out and they give a notification by June 30th, it's 17 million. If they don't, if they give notification July 1st or later, that doubles. So it goes to $34 million. Now, for a school like San Diego State, which for years has operated on like a $50 million uh, annual budget, going up now closer to 70 as they kind of prepare to try to get into a power conference, um, uh, $34 million is a huge amount of money. On top of, they just built a $310 million stadium that they've got right. debt service on. Was it Snapdragon? Snapdragon Stadium. Right. On the same, it's, on, it's in Mission Valley. It's you know a, a pitching wedge away from where the old Jack Murphy, Qualcomm, SDCC, whatever you want to call it, they had different names. Stadium was where the Chargers played and where they played. Um, 35,000 capacity, about 32,000 seats plus standing room. Uh, but it costs money, and they and they built it themselves. The city didn't kick in any any um, public funds for it, so right. they got that on, on you know uh, you know hanging over their head as well. Uh, the AD has basically said they got to make a decision by June thirtieth. If, if if they go past that, that number gets really too big to pay, and I don't think any conference is going to help them pay that. 
Uh, and so it's, it, it put an arbitrary deadline on a process that really hasn't had one. Uh, and, it, and it kind of really complicates things on both sides because the Pac-12 needs, needs a team in there by 24, uh, 25. And Antonio State can't physically do it unless they know by June 30th. And uh, so to make all of this kind of, uh, I guess, more clear, I want to ask you, if there is a preference from the folks, from the fan base, from administrators at San Diego State, because I think it makes a lot of sense for San Diego State that the Pac-12 would be the preference, right? 100%. And they've said that. Uh, in fact, I got the president to really say it last week um, because she said, look, this is an institutional decision. This isn't an athletic director decision. This isn't mm -hmm. a, a purely athletic department decision. This is an institutional decision made by the president and by other presidents and in the conference. And, and so it's bigger than she goes, it's not just a sports league. It's, a, it's an academic league. It's who you align yourself with. San Diego state is a, is a growing state university. I think one thing people might not, not understand or know, there's two state university systems in California. There's the university of California, the UC system with Cal, UCLA, UC Irvine, UC Davis, UC San Diego, et cetera. UC Santa Barbara is another one. Um, and then there's the Cal State system, and they were set up differently. Uh, the UC system was was much more of a uh, a, uh, a research institution, the higher edu higher end education system, a lot of graduate programs. CSU system and San Diego State started off as a teachers college. It was to sort of educate the masses. A lot of first generation students. They don't have that many graduate programs. They're not considered an R one research institution. Well, San Diego State has kind of outgrown that. There's 23, I think, Cal State University campuses. Um, and San Diego State's outgrown that. And they've got 35,000 students. Their plan is to expand to 50,000. They just bought all this land around the stadium in Mission Valley, which is three trolley stops away from their main campus, which is they have nowhere to go. It's 286 acres. They have nowhere to go. And it's, it's, it's getting cramped. Parking's a nightmare. And so they're going to expand into Mission Valley with some classrooms and uh, some research opportunities um, and parking, et cetera. And so they want to get to 50,000. And they're much bigger than this original uh, sort of model. And so they aspire to greater things. And they want to be aligned with these universities that are all AAU um, uh, universities. Um, they're all R1 universities. It's, it's Stanford and there's Cal and there's University of Washington. And they're all very prestigious institutions and they want to be aligned with that and no disrespect to the to the big 12 but academically this is what they they see as their fit right. so from that standpoint it's a hundred percent they want the pac-12 so what makes this difficult though is that the pac-12 i mean uh, to be quite frank about it you know to me i've said this a bunch if you have a deal close you go ahead you announce the deal you don't keep telling me over and over again that you're going to announce the deal. Eventually it's yeah. going to happen. We're going to see, we're going to wait. And I, for the life of me, Mark, I have never understood this. And I think a lot of us in the big 12 community don't get it. Why they keep setting these arbitrary deadlines. They keep missing. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It, it makes them look, it, it's basically a, you know, a, you set a date that at the best you can get a deal done, but most likely it's going to make you look dumb. And I think it's made them look a little bit foolish a lot of these times. And so what I'm thinking here, when, when you you know when you put it like this, and the preference obviously being the Pac-12, does a Pac-12 just think they can wait out San Diego State and say, you know what, if we don't even if we don't have a deal, their preference is going our direction, so maybe they'll just join if that date hits. It's not like we'll go and join the Big 12; that they want to be with us, so maybe they'll just join us. Uh, yes and no. I mean, I think they're actually using this deadline um, in in a sense, trying to accelerate. Um, the media rights talks obviously mm. they don't have anything if they had something they would have announced it you know um they've I, it's incredible to me that all these schools have still stuck around they're I, all kind of I, i'm the same way too. i think they've given george kliafkoff more than enough time yeah and and at a certain point rubber hits the road and you know they're all kind of sitting in this room staring at each other saying okay who's going to blink first colorado looks like they're the ones going to blink first <laughs> and the question becomes um is that just a one-off? Is that, ah, oh, they used to be in the Big 12. They came to Pac-12, Pac realized, you know, we, we orient more on that on the east side of the Rockies. We, we look in that direction. We look across the plains. We don't, you know, orient towards the west coast. It's a better fit for us travel-wise, all those things. 
uh, financially. And it's a one-off and they just take San Diego State and, you know, they live on happily ever after. Or do dominoes start falling, which is what I'm inclined to believe happens. Right. Because that's the case of musical chairs and you're Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, and you're going, man, I, if we don't act now, we're not going to have a chair to sit in. And, and then we're in Mountain West 2.0. And, and so, um, yeah, they, they've had more than enough time to, to cut a deal. And the longer it goes... Uh, you know, anyone who thinks, you know, they read their, their releases and say, oh, these, they're so united. And they all say, of course, they're going to say that. It, it, they, they, yeah, it hurts their negotiating position to say that they're all over the place. I mean, it makes the, you know, as, as George Costanza and, and, or Jerry, and, you know, told Jerry Seinfeld, it's negotiation, you know, and that's what this is. And, right. and so people need to understand that as well. Um, but if you, do, if you believe those schools are not talking to Big 12 through back channels and quietly, and not having these conversations with their presidents and board of trustees that, you know, we might have to leave. This might be the best option. Even if we do get a TV deal in the PAC 12, it's going to be inferior and it could be behind paywalls. We might have to go anyway. This might be, and, and in five years, even if we sign it, the whole thing's going to break apart anyway. So we might as well go now. Those conversations are all happening. Trust me. Uh, and, and I think just waiting to, to see who pulls the trigger first and, and then it's, you know, shoot out. Okay. Corral. Yeah, I actually, I heard, I heard an interesting thought today. Tim Fitzgerald, who covers Kansas State, said, "You know, the Pac-12, in some ways, like maybe just waiting is good for them because in the end, if somebody leaves, they can say, oh, well, they, they didn't wait for us to get the deal.' But at that point, there's no conference left anymore, right? So, like, you you right. lost. So, you know, you, you can say it's not your fault, but what do you have left to to have there? And I'm more inclined to think it's kind of the other way around, right? It's more of the. I, it sounds like." From everybody I've talked to, they they think that the schools want to find that justification for leaving, at least on the Pac-12 side. But I I feel like with through you know they want to say, look, this was the offer, and it wasn't good enough. But it isn't just the fact that there hasn't been a good enough offer just oh, yeah. at and this it, point to leave. I mean, I feel like there's there's enough there. That's just my take. And I also think you know the Big 12 is sitting there and they've got to weigh two things. Number one, it's it's good for business to break up the Pac-12. And yes. the reason it's good for business is because yes. instead of five power conferences, now you have four. And and, and one of them is not going to market until 2036, ACC. Yeah. You're not going to three. Them. So, you know, rising tide lift all boats. You know, there's right. more money out there for fewer. Or, or the Best same football, West of the football. Rockies, yeah. late night games, all those things. Right. And, uh, and so, um, you know, so do they weigh that and say – we want to break them up. We want to be, you know, aggressive and active and trying to, to, to break this thing up. Or do they wait and see how bad the Pac-12 deal is and say, well, we don't have to offer them full shares. They'll come for $25 million, you know, to start with and save us some money and, and we'll have a little bit more financial stability. Um, you know, we don't have to go back to the partners and get more money and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so I think, uh, I think another thing that people have not talked about uh, and this is the ESPN angle because we've seen so many murky reports about is ESPN in and are they out? Wow, they're laying off a lot of people. Can they really take on another conference? This is kind of a backdoor way of getting that fourth TV window. If if they can snag a, you know three or four schools from the from the Pac-12 into the Big 12, um, and ESPN agrees quietly, yeah, we'll bump up the the um, the media rights for those schools so that they can be whole. Um, it's a way for them to spend the same amount of money they would have on the Pac-12, but maybe talk, not take that PR hit that, hey, we're laying people off, but we're grabbing another uh, media rights property. Um, they're not. They, you know, they're, they're technically saying, no, no, we're, we're, not, we're not investing in anything else, but they really are spending the same amount of money and getting the same amount of uh, return. But uh, it, it, it just from a PR standpoint might look better. It, so San Diego State to me is they're not a natural fit in the Big Twelve, but they're very no. much a vision a vision fit, right? I mean, this is for what Brett Yormark sees this conference as, and I, I think now, I mean, a lot of it's narrative, sure, but there is a sense and this is across all media, whether it's Paul Feinbaum, whether it's folks you know we ever go to the, the big meetings with you know uh, Brett Yormark is has the ability right now to be out in public. Like George Klyavkov, you know, he could not go sit. Uh, ringside at a, at a Javante Davis fight like we just saw <laughs> George uh, Brett Yormark do because guess what? It kind of looks bad. It's like, hey, you should be on the horn 24-7 now. He's not, but like you need to be. Um, but Brett Yormark seems to have this, he does have this coast-to-coast -coast vision for the Big 12. And San Diego State does very much fit that vision. 
And also they fit it at somewhat of a, an affordable price, right? Because you think if you add them, they're not going to be a full partner from the right. word go. Right. So, right. and also I would say is too, yeah, I want your thoughts on that, but also the fan base side of things. I don't know if this is true or not, but a lot of fans have reached out to me and said, we'd love to be part of the big deal. That sounds exciting for us. And Look, basketball wise, I think it's it's tough to say that Brian Dutcher's outfit right now wouldn't fit in the Big Twelve very well, considering how did they uh, you know how well they did last year. Um, so in football, I think it's more like <clears throat> they've been good enough. I think you know we have Kansas in this league, right? So it's not like San Diego State's going to be you know the Kansas in the way up, but but I think basketball fits, and obviously they're West Coast, and you think football. Hey, San Diego State being in Texas two or three times a year. Probably go hurt the recruiting uh, right. for them, right. for them in, in a power five league. So your thoughts on the fit and also what the fans are saying, what the fan sentiment is. Well, I'll take the, the first part of that. It, the fans, what motivates the fans here, and this is San Diego, San Diego is the most unique sports market in the country. It's just really weird. And it's got a lot of transplants. A third of the county is, is Mexican-American. Mm. Um, maybe not first generation, but second or third. And a lot of their allegiances are to Mexican soccer or boxing. Um, or their new so Big Twelve Mexico is going to fit right in. Is that what you're saying? 100, yeah. Um, it, it's an intriguing market in that sense. It's the eighth largest city in the country, but only like the 27th media market. Um, but it's a lot of splintered allegiances. But the the overriding sentiment here is there's a huge inferiority complex because we're this big city, but we sit in the shadow of L.A. We're down in the corner of the right. country. A lot of people forget about us. Um, we don't win in anything. You know, the Chargers couldn't win. The Padres never won a World Series. You know, San Diego State basketball getting to the getting to the championship game was a huge deal here, huge beyond what it would normally be anywhere else because it galvanized the city and it fed this inferiority complex. It's like you puff their chest out, wear San Diego State gear, and say, "See, we're somebody. We're 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 a national player." And so, the desire to get into a power conference is is just that. It's ego. It's inferiority complex, mm-hmm. and I get it. I mean, they've been, you know, in these backwater leagues in in the west coast and then they've been in the mountain west in the shadow of the pac-12 and they've always aspired to be somebody in 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 college athletics and being in a power conference gets them that and they don't really care what one it is they don't really peel back the layers and say wait a minute you're gonna send your softball team to west virginia central florida you're gonna send you know tennis teams to waco texas really um you know they're 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 right. you know, they don't have the financial wherewithal to charter all that they're going to be putting teams on planes through DFW or through Denver. I mean, you're going to change a plane everywhere you fly. And in the Mountain West, they only have to change planes once, and that's to Boise. Uh, and every other year, you know, it seems they get a nonstop, so they, they don't even have to do that. They can get nonstop flights everywhere. It's a much quicker experience. But this is not going to be a quick experience. It's going to be an all-day travel. You're going to be in climates and in places that don't really fit the whole West Coast. We're going to West Virginia? Yeah, what vibe and all that. It just doesn't it right. doesn't fit in that respect, doesn't fit academically from what they want to be and where they're going, how they're growing. And so I think that San Diego State's interest in the Big 12, I think they would take an, an invitation, but I think San Diego State has been using the Big 12 talk more as leverage with the, with the Pac-12 um, and, and to, to try to get a deal done. Right. And just don't. I mean, I, if they don't have a choice, they'll they'll do it. Yeah, but, that's kind of the idea, right? Because what, what does that mean? What yeah. what does that mean? Because you know everything that we can tell, like the 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 idea of weighing two offers from from the pack is not really something that's like the the Big Twelve television deal is fully materialized, right? I mean, it is, it is right. what it is. It's it's signed, sealed, delivered. It's all those things. It's it's difficult to negotiate, I guess. Even if you're San Diego State, right? You know, you feel like okay, they should be in a position of power, but if if, if if what's happening in the Pac-12 is nebulous and we don't really have an idea of what, like, right. is it the CW? Is it Amazon plus Apple? Is it a combination of the three? You'd already mentioned the ESPN piece of all of this. And so also I think for a school too that is, um, you know, like you mentioned, on the rise in a lot of ways, visibility is certainly key. I think San Diego State is about to experience what Butler experienced, what um, a school 10 minutes down the road for me, VCU experienced uh, after their final four run. We see the... We see the old application numbers skyrocket a bit after after that happens, which is good. <coughs> you want to keep building off of that visibility, and there doesn't seem to be any guarantee of that. What do you think the visibility piece is, is worth to them at San Diego State? 
Well, the one thing is that their applications have been through the roof for a number of years and a lot because of the basketball team. Mm. Um, people just sort of discovered that, wow, this is a pretty good university. When I first came to San Diego in the late 80s, it was not highly respected at all. Like you'd go up on campus on a Friday night and there would be these school buses, like 10 of them lined up outside. The, they didn't even have VS Arena back then outside their old gym where they played Peterson gym. And it was just taking students down to the border to go to Tijuana the party because wow. the drinking age there is there's really not, you know, 18 or might not even be a drinking age. Uh, and they would put these students on these buses. They'd go down there and then, you know, half of them would come back and half of them, who knows what happened to them. Um, and, you know, and now when you walk on campus and the thing I say is you see a lot of backpacks. And you walk by the library, there might be a line to get in the library. There was, I mean, there were people who walked in the library as seniors and said, wow, this is what it looks like. I mean, it, it was a complete party school. It is not anymore. And it has, and it's just sort of a supply and demand thing. California has grown. They haven't added that many universities, only a couple. And so spots, and just like all college across the country, I mean, you got to have a 4.0 to get in San Diego State now. It is really, mm. really hard. It's a really good school. Um, and so... Uh, you know, they're not too worried about that piece of it. Yeah, they're not too concerned about about the visit. The vis- that's that's an interesting point. And and, 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 and so that, that they've had over a hundred thousand applications in the last right. few years. So that part of it isn't. Yeah, that part isn't really changing. In terms of the athletic department, they feel like they got to capitalize on that. Right, that's um, what you do. Yeah, and and you know and and take that next step. And you've seen that with Wichita State, Butler. You know, a couple other schools have done it. Yeah, VCU um, was the one. That, yeah, VCU. I, I, yeah, I agree. And then, and that's the that's the thing because, you know, the the capitalization part. You know, to me, what that means at least is there are people who are alumni or fans who see that stuff, and 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 VCU is still riding off of that. Mm-hmm. People want to give money. They want to see their school back in those places. You know, they, and it becomes an expectation of. I, I think San Diego State already now is tournament every year. I mean, they basically are essentially at this point tournament every single. I yeah, I mean, they, and they have been. I mean, since right, yeah, it's, that's that's been then. Twenty oh yeah. nine oh ten is quite right. Yeah, but now it's that hunger. It's a, it's that yeah. hunger of you know, hey, we're trouble. we're not the Mountain West. We are our own thing, right? The Mountain yeah. West is bad in the tournament. Yeah. We're we're good in the tournament. We're we're yeah. a different we're a different animal. Yeah. Um, and you and you there is this hunger and desire, and also you got to capitalize off that, especially with your larger your larger money donors, right? Because those folks want to feel like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna start giving more and more and more. I want to make sure the ROI on that is going to be a bit higher. And I think visibility wise, you know, I, I mean, uh, this is where I'll ask you the question about the actual teams themselves. Basketball. Yeah. I'll, we'll give the old thumbs up on that one. Yeah. We're good to go in the, the big 12, right? There will be some hard years for sure. There is mm-hmm. for basically every big 12 school that is not. Texas uh, Tech. AU. Yeah. Yeah. Texas Tech is a great example of, you know, hardship falling upon them a few years removed from a, a championship game appearance. But for at least for Kansas and Baylor, maybe a little bit, uh, they're they're kind of almost suck proof in some ways. Everybody mm-hmm. else though can have a, can have a down year. Even see you know West Virginia, Bob Huggins made mm-hmm. a they had a rough year this year, a fight to make the NCAA tournament. They might go through some of those San Diego State, but still you're good to go. Football is really the one I'm I'm interested in hearing from you about about your your thoughts on the football program at a Power Five level when you replace the well we've got Colorado State this week. Wyoming next week and Boise might be the big one, if you will. Right. And then that becomes K state Baylor and Texas tech in back-to-back weeks. Uh, maybe asking if they're ready to handle something like, like that's not the fair question, but could you see them getting the program to a point well, that's, where they're ready for that? You just describe what the biggest problem is for a football team. And, and it, you know, when you look at these group of five teams, you say, Oh wow, they're pretty good. Well, yeah, because they can, they can take a couple injuries they're not playing, you know, their starters all get, you know, the entire game because they're they're winning by a lot against a lesser opponent. They can relax a little bit and they don't have to be as deep. When you get in these power conferences, you're going to take injuries. You're going to have to be deeper. The game's going down to the wire. Um, and mentally, you just can't have a, a bring your B game, you know, some week and win. And that's what you're able to do in a, in, in a conference like the Mountain West. Um, and that's the big step up now. Are they going to be ready for that? No. Um, they the, the foot. The one thing about San Diego State is that despite some of the football success, um, it's different in football. There's a glass ceiling on a Mountain West team. There's only so far they can go. 
There's only so many people they can schedule. They've tried to schedule some Pac-12 teams um, and they've had some success against them. But uh, it's not like basketball where they're playing everybody and anybody who will play them. They will go anywhere and play anybody uh, and they get in the tournament and they play these teams and they beat them. Um, and so um, it's Santa State's really, and I say this all the time, it, it's, a, it's a basketball school. It's much more like Kansas um, than it is like Oklahoma. I mean, it, it, it is right. a basketball school with a football team. Um, they have a nice new stadium. But when you look at, for example, NIL, which is the area where I think they're really going to be behind. I mean, facilities wise, they'll catch up, um, you know, size yeah. of school, all those things, they'll be okay. But NIL, which is what it takes right now. I mean, they're behind in basketball. They really don't have very much NIL and they, they just went to the championship game and they're struggling to get guys. They are struggling right now mm. to get interest because they don't have the money. Football and in, in basketball NIL, they have 24,000, 2,000 a month for everybody in the team. They're very much of a team or ethos. Everyone gets the same. Football, they're just starting up this, this collective and it's 20 bucks to, to tweet about a pizza parlor. I mean, they're not even in the league with any mm. of these schools. And we're going to see it in the football field this year. They've lost some, they lost three or four of their best players. Um, they haven't really got a lot of guys in. Um, and I think they're going to struggle. I really think they're going to struggle. And uh, and then you go up a level, uh, it, it's going to be tough. So uh, that would be the one I worry about. Uh, men's golf, they'll be okay. They have a really good golf coach. They've made the NCAA tournament before. Uh, I think they'll be okay with that. They have a lot of courses here. The NCAA golf uh, tournament's going to be. In I mean, who wouldn't want to go play golf in San Diego for college? Yeah. I mean, that's, so that's that's, that's the that's sport. I think they'll be okay. And but you mentioned basketball. I think it's worth talking about that. Yes, they'll be able to compete in that league. Um, you know, it's a great program. But people here are used to hanging banners and winning conference tournaments and winning 26, 27 games, 30 games. Right. That's not going to happen. And again, they don't have the NIL juice right now. Uh, and will they ever? I don't know. Uh, if there comes a day when you have to start paying athletes, are they going to be able to? There isn't that kind of corporate um, donation booster frenzied base here like you find in a Waco, Texas or Stillwater, Oklahoma. And so I, I you know, are people going to be okay with them finishing sixth, which is a really good finish in the big 12 in basketball. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they haven't finished six in the, in the mountain West ever. So uh, it, it, or at least not in the last, you know, 15, 20 years. So, uh, you know, and the rest of the sports, they'll get crushed in some sports. Um, you know, <laughs> your softball team just made it the super regional, but man, then you're going into the big 12 Soccer would be tough and the travel, all those things added up. It's going to be a rough transition for them and they're used to winning things. So there's that factor as well. Uh, I want to end on this. Uh, where do you think, you know, and if you don't want to make a prediction, it's fine, but where do you think this ultimately ends? Cause I do think it ends for San Diego state, whether it is the big 12 or the pack 12, I do believe it ultimately ends in one of those leagues. Um, now the deadline, once again, we talked about, it complicates things very, very much. But where do you think this ultimately ends for San Diego State University? I think they go in this big circle and end up where they started, to be honest. So you think they stay? I mean, they have to stay. They I think they end up in, in Mountain West 2.0. I, I mean, I really wow. think the Pac 12 is mm -hmm. trending towards falling apart. And if it doesn't happen now, it'll happen in five years. Um, the Pac 12. Uh, sorry. I think you said Big 12. The Pac 12, excuse me. Yeah. Um, and so I think the four corner schools go. I think Oregon and Washington try to get into the Big 10 somehow even if it's for a very reduced rights fee, they just got to get out. And that leaves the, <clears throat> the PAC 12 with Stanford, Cal, Oregon state, Washington state. And I think they form some kind of, like I said, Mount West 2.0 with the upper tier of the, of the Mount West, UNLV, Fresno state, um, Boise state, maybe New Mexico, San Diego state, um, those type of schools, you know, push together and, you know, they maybe get 10 million a year in rights fees if they're lucky. And, you know, it's a step up from where they are now, but I think that's kind of where things will shake out. San Diego State, clearly, they're spending a ton of money. They're going to go into a ton of debt. They're clearly a sort of the last chopper out of Saigon. They're trying to get grab on to the coattails of some power conference and hang on for the ride. And and then when they have more money, prove that they can win and be a, be a competitor and work their way up and, and get into some sort of stable power conference. But, you know, it could go either way. They could fall off that helicopter and and – the way things are going right now um, with Colorado and, and what could be happening to the Pac-12, I think that's what's going to happen. 
All right, Mark, we appreciate you joining us today. Where can everybody find you and your work in all of its variety? Uh, at San Diego Union Tribune uh, or on Twitter at, uh, at S-D-U-T Ziegler, Z-E-I-G-L-E-R. Mark Ziegler, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And the, I mean, unlike the Pac-12 thing, we have a physical deadline on this. So I guess we'll see what happens here in the next We're month. We're going to find out on June 30th. There we go. Mark Ziegler, thank you so much. My pleasure.